My name is Vanessa, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of British Columbia. And I'm going to be talking to you today about how we use nanopore sequencing to identify novel genomic structures and regulation patterns at HPV integration events in cervical cancer. So HPV is necessary, but not sufficient, in the development of cervical cancer. The normal cervix is made up of epithelial cells that differentiate from a bottom basal layer into terminally differentiated keratinocytes in the upper layers. HPV infects the basal stem cells through microabrasions within the cervix. Typically, these infections last one to two years, but persistence of a latent infection of a high-risk HPV type can eventually lead to, to genetic mutations that leads to high-grade lesions. Part of this transformation into cancer is the integration of the HPV genome into the host genome. The HPV genome is made up of early genes and late genes, and this describes the point in the viral life cycle that they're expressed. Key genes in the genome are E6 and E7, and they de degrade P53 and retinoblastoma, respectively. In 70% of cervical cancers, it is found integrated within the cervical cancer genome. And when it integrates, often the gene E2 becomes disrupted or removed, and this gene normally regulates E6 and E7 and the other early genes in a negative feedback loop. So this can lead to increased expression of the oncogenes. Integrating HPV also results in structural rearrangements in the local area because uh, integrating requires the presence of double-stranded breaks. These rearrangements can be simple events like a deletion upon insertion of HPV or very complicated events with multiple integrations and subclonal structures. This example here shows uh, two breakpoints of HPV integration that have a duplication in between them, and the second copy also harbors a deletion. In cancer, HPV tends to integrate near oncogenes, such as KLF12, MYC, and TP63. In this circle plot, the bars indicate HPV integration events, and they are stacked when they are found within the same genomic bin. And you can see some of the hot spots within the genome highlighted here. Also, when HPV integrates, the uh, genes tend to get very upregulated. And you can see this in the box plot, where the integrated sample for the respective gene is shown as the red dot, and the gray dots are the rest of the cohort. So the objective of this project is to investigate the integra how integration of HPV affects the structure and regulation of cervical cancer genomes, and we're using Oxford Nanopore technology to do this. So our aims are first to generate uh, nanopore data on uh, the whole genomes of 50-plus cervical cancer samples, then to identify and characterize the associated structural variants of these integration events, and finally to assess, assess the methylation um, PAT profiles of the HPV integration. This study will be primarily looking at cervical cancer samples from two cohorts, and these include one collected in Uganda and another collected in USA. So the first is the HIV Tumor Molecular Characterization Project, or HTMCP, and there's a total of 118 cervical cancer samples in this cohort, from which we have sequenced 44 of them. And from TCGA, uh, we have sequenced 22 of these samples, from a total pool of 192 samples. On these samples, we performed the Genome Sciences Center's nanopore analysis pipeline, which Kieran O'Neill will be discussing more in the cancer session after this. And this includes doing uh, base calling, alignment, SNV calling, and structural variant calling, as well as methylation and phasing. And then following that pipeline, I do my own custom workflow that I've developed for HPV-containing samples. Looking at the QC metrics for these samples, the HTMCP samples had an average of 30x coverage, while TCGA had an average of 20x coverage. Then 50s for HTMCP samples were around uh, 20 kb, while TCGA was around 10 kb. And also, the HDMCP samples generally had a lower chimeric rate and error rate as well. In almost all our samples, uh, HPV, it was observed that HPV integrates within human regions between where they have gained at least two double-stranded breaks, 
while two double-stranded breaks also exist on the HPV genome in order to break it into a linearized segment that can be then inserted. We refer to the collection of the breakpoints that contain HPV integration junctions as a, in a linked region as an integration event. To call these HPV integration breakpoints, structural variant calling was performed on a hybrid HG38 HPV genome, so the HPV types within our cohorts were added as additional chromosomes. And this allowed us to detect integration breakpoints as translocations. The breakpoints were then grouped if one of the two conditions were fulfilled. Either the breakpoints were co-occurring on one or more of the same reads, or they're within 500 kb, KB of each other. So the benefit of long reads is that by adding this condition that we can pair together breakpoints that are co-occurring on the same read, we can identify integration events that span multiple chromosomes or are linked together from great distances through structural rearrangements. So this would not be possible without long reads. Next, the reads from the samples were subsetted so that the reads belonging to the event were used to create assemblies. And then these assemblies um, were used along with the read alignment patterns to then categorize the integration events into a particular integration type. Across the 56 samples that had HPV integration detected, there were six observed patterns. And I'm going to go through each of these patterns in the next few slides. So there are three major resolutions of integration events that contain two breakpoints. The first is the human region in between these breakpoints gets deleted. And this is shown, uh, the deleted region is shown as region B in this figure. And then just below it, you can see in the first track, we have the whole genome coverage. And below that, we have the HPV-containing reads. And between these HPV-containing reads, there's a clear deletion here. Uh, the second is the duplication of the region in between um, of the B region here. And this is where you get an alternating human HPV duplicating structure. And you can see in the HPV containing reads, the reads can enter the, the duplication and they also exit the duplication. And this is contrasted from the third example, which is ECC DNA or extra chromosomal circular DNA. And in this scenario, the B segment gets completely excised from the genome and it exists as a circular contig, and it's uh, connected together through the HPV integration. So in these reads, you never see the reads within, between the breakpoints um, leaving the circular region. They're completely contained between the breakpoints. Break when comparing the distances between HPV breakpoints, we also observe that ECC DNA, the distance between breakpoints and the ECC DNA was significantly greater than the deletions and the duplications. And it also had a consistent size of around 70 KB. So it appears that the ECC DNAs might have to be of a certain size in order to be stable within the cell. The content of the ECC DNA can be uh, visualized by their assemblies. And three examples are shown here. Two are simple ECC DNAs, meaning there's two breakpoints that remove the, the segment from the genome, and then get connected together through HPV. And the third is a complex ECC DNA, meaning there's multiple rearranged segments that get rearranged together within the circle. The first example on the left, or right for you, um, shows a completely intergenic portion of chromosome 13. And the second example shows HPV being inserted in a genic region, specifically TP63. And this includes two exons of the gene. And the direction of transcription in this genic region is actually opposing the direction of transcription of HPV. The third example has three different segments in an intergenic region of chromosome 13 that all get connected together within the circle along with the inserted HPV. The actual contents of the inserted HPV sequence can be quite variable and variable in size as well but all three examples showed here um, all contain E6 and E7 as the pink and the purple lines. And these are the oncogenes that we talked about. And so it seems like these are the minimally required genes to have cancer. Our collaborators ran a PCR experiment to validate the presence of ECC DNA structures. 
And in this example, the primers were aligned so that they oppose each other if it were a linear, on a linear chromosome, or they would face each other if it was in a circle. And the PCR result was as expected in an 11 kb product, and it supported our hypothesis that these were indeed circular. The next category of integration uh, also only has two breakpoints, but these breakpoints are existing on opposite chromosomes. In this example, the two breakpoints are in the, the pericentromeric regions of chromosome 4 and chromosome 12. And on the human side, we can see high-quality reads mapping to the respective chromosomes, and then after the breakpoint, they're mismatched as they align to the opposite chromosome. And on HPV, we can see only a tiny piece of the sequence actually remains, and this is about 164 base pairs, which wouldn't be functional at all. But you can see chromosome 12 and chromosome 4 are kind of sandwiching this piece of DNA in between. So the proposed, uh, oh, and also in the copy number, you can see there's a copy number loss at these breakpoints, right at the p-arm. Um, so the proposed mechanism is shown at the bottom here, and it's where the integration sites are on the p-arms of these two chromosomes. The two q-arms then recombine to make a derivative chromosome, and the p-arms are then lost, making this unbalanced translocation event. So this is exactly the kind of type of event that nanopore sequencing allowed us to identify. The next example are multi-breakpoint multi integration events. And these are events that have more than two breakpoints within the event and often contain multiple, sometimes subclonal, uh, structures and rearrangements. In this example, there's about 20 breakpoints over the locus containing UPK1B on chromosome 3, and then there's translocations connecting to chromosome 17, where B2 resides. And this also has two integration breakpoints. So uh, these, a lot of these structural variants in this region can be quite subclonal as well. So it seems like the presence of multiple double-stranded breaks in this region makes it quite unstable, and it can also change over the tumor's evolution. Integration within repeat regions has been reported in other studies, but we confirmed the presence with long reads. So in these two examples here, there's integration occurring within the telomeres and within the centromeres. Um, and in the bottom track, there's a repeat masker showing that the integration breakpoints by the arrowheads are in the telomere in the TAR1 repeat, and in the centromere in the ALR alpha repeat. And these integration also associates with an expansion of these repeats. There are certain samples that are hyper-integrated when compared to others, while others only have one integration event within their genome. The most integrated sample in this cohort had about 18 integration events that were made up of, about, of over 80 breakpoints. Um, as a whole, HPV-16, which is shown in the blue, was more hyper-integrated than the other major types in the cohort, including HPV-18 and HPV-45. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of variability between how many HPV integration events are within a sample. Additionally, looking at all the samples together, we can see some integration events uh, categories are more common than others. The most common is the multi-integration, uh, multi-breakpoint integration, which represents about half the integration events. And the next most common are ECC DNA integration and uh, deletion integration. And that's followed by duplication and repeat region uh, integration, translocation, and complex ECC DNA. The presence of these integration categories also can change between the HPV type within the sample. So HPV 16, for example, had more multi-breakpoint multi integration events than HPV 18, but had less uh, duplication integration than HPV 18 while HPV45 seems to only have deletion in ECC DNA integration, with ECC DNA integration representing the majority of the events in that type. An additional bonus to nanopore sequencing is its ability to detect DNA methylation on the read, and also its ability to phase reads into haplotypes. 
So this track shows the DNA methylation at an integration breakpoint, and the first track is haplotype 1, and the second tra track shows haplotype 2, where the integration is occurring. And upstream of this breakpoint, there's a clear demethylation that is going upstream, and this is shown in the graph beside it. So it actually extends quite a wide region with it having particularly high demethylation frequency a uh, lower deep methylation frequency, about 100 kb away, and it doesn't get back to the normalized uh, other haplotype until about 400 kb away. So it's quite a wide region that's being affected. And lastly, we wanted to see how the HPV integration, uh, how, how the HPV genome itself looked in the methylation patterns upon integration. So this figure shows three example samples, and each row within the box is an integration event. So a sample can have multiple integration events. Um, and beside it shows six samples that do not have HPV integration, so the HPV is still in its episomal form. And in the integrated samples, the dots are representing CPGs, so they're red when they're methylated and blue when they're unmethylated. And the boxed region on the end, the LCR, this is the long control region. And this is a cis-regulatory uh, non-coding region of the HPV genome that has a lot of activating features about it. And this is invariably unmethylated across these three integrated samples. Uh, while the genic region that's uh, beside the LCR seems to be quite methylated, especially in, the, in HPV 16 samples while HPV 18 and 45 tend to have at least one integration event that's more demethylated in the beginning of the genic region, but becomes more methylated in the later parts of the genes. And in contrast, the unintegrated episomal samples seem to be quite unmethylated all the way through the genome. So in conclusion, HPV integration events often involve structural variants that can be delineated and categorized with Oxford nanopore technology. DNA methylation across integration events can show us how HPV is affecting the epigenome on the haplotype affected, and uh, in the individual integration events on the affected haplotype. And finally, the genic region of integrated HPV is hypermethylated when compared to episomal HPV with some variability between HPV types. So with that, I would like to thank everyone that's been involved in this project at the Genome Sciences Center in the Medical College of Wisconsin, as well as everybody in my lab, especially my supervisor, Dr. Marco Mara. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions.